the handyman corner with Max Ogle. Welcome, Max. You're welcome. How are you doing today? Good, good. We usually don't do our podcasts together. Nope. This is a special occasion. So Handyman rules. <laughs> so I don't know if they're lucky or unlucky that they get us both today. I'd probably say lucky. Yes. I remember I used to have so much trouble with the garbage disposal. Well, that's because you put the wrong stuff down a garbage disposal. Yes, yeah, so 35 years of my life, I'd never had a garbage disposal. It will not grind up socks. No, <laughs> I didn't put socks in it. <laughs> but I remember one day you were working at Harley Davidson, and I uh, decided to clean out the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And there was this big bowl of spaghetti in it. No. And so I decided to put the big bowl of spaghetti down the garbage disposal. I had a spoon, and I was just cramming it down there, and I was running water. All at the same time. All at the same time. And then all of a sudden, it just stopped. Yeah. And I was making going to make dinner before you got home, and so I had to call him at Harley and be like, <gasps> Max, we've got a problem. <laughs> and what happened? Do you remember? I think I had to clean it out. Remind me what I had to do. Yep. She had to clean out the garbage disposal because she put too much stuff in it. Nope. Start a little bit. A little bit at a time. You don't need to dump the whole bowl in there all of a sudden. Yeah, so I never put spaghetti down the garbage disposal big, ever, ever again. A big thing I've seen a lot with garbage disposals just getting clogged up, still working, but lettuce. Do not. Put lettuce down your garbage disposal because it floats. It will clog up your drain. Really? I didn't know that. Yes. Wow. So fixing a garbage disposal is usually relatively simple. If you're not equipped with the right knowledge, yep. you can always call somebody like Max to walk you through it. But a lot of people are scared with dealing with these garbage disposal problems. So don't freak out. You can always... Well, Call a pro. Yeah. People have seen too many movies. So you stick your hand in the garbage disposal and they come back out like that. It's usually not the case. You just it, need to be able to shut it off. Yeah. Like you want it turned off before you put your hand in. Oh, right? yeah. If it's stuck, don't stick your hand in there and see why. No. Don't do that. Yeah, That's so, how people lose a finger. So, yeah. There's usually a yeah. switch on the wall which you can shut off. If you want to be even more safety oriented, you can shut off the breaker for it. Another problem that we have in the Ogle house sometimes is noise problems. Our kids will put things in the garbage disposal that don't need to be in the garbage disposal. So what's some things that you've seen that produce noises in a garbage disposal? Well, garbage disposals are not trash compactors. So plastic knives, plastic forks. Metal knives, metal forks, metal spoons, uh, earrings. I lost my ring one time. Uh, what else have I dug up? Quarters. Don't understand that one. Uh, you know, just a little bit of everything. Wooden spoons. They'll grind it up eventually, but it takes quite a while. Wow. Bones. Bones, yeah. Of bones. Chicken bones, no, not like it, people bones. It, <laughs> no, it'll grind them up eventually. Bones, but it, you just don't want to put them in there because it'll it'll tear your garbage spells a lot. Yeah. So if there is noises present, there's usually a reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. If you dump something or if you turn your garbage spells on, it's nice and quiet, and you can hear it running. Then it's nice and smooth. There's nothing in it. But if you turn it on and it sounds like you're trying to grind up a dead body in your garbage disposal, there's probably something wrong there. Um, you know, anything you put in your garbage disposal should be ground up really quickly um, unless you're dumping a bunch of it in there at one time. But if you got something sitting in there grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding, you probably, you probably need to stop. Take that out. Um, lemon rinds. Christy Ogle. Sorry about I like to put lemons in it. Yeah. It makes them smell good. Well, sure it does. But, it, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll eventually tear up your garbage disposal. Now, if you are, you do have to fix it, what's some good tips to fix a garbage disposal? If you were walking a woman like me through fixing a garbage disposal that is not handy, how, what would you say, Max? Okay. So one of the first things you want to find out is what is it doing? 
When you flip the switch on the wall, what does it do? Nothing? Absolutely nothing? Does it hum? Does it start to turn and then stop? So you need to figure out what the problem is. Each one of them is, a, is an individual problem. Okay, so if you flip the switch on the wall and it does absolutely nothing, it doesn't hum or anything like that, turn the switch back off. On the bottom of the garbage disposal is actually a reset button. What? There's a reset button? Yeah, it's red. Um, all you have to do is, a lot of people like to see it. They don't like to stick their hand underneath the garbage disposal for some reason. Um, and it's this button you push up on and it should click and it's a reset button for your garbage disposal. Flip the switch on the wall and it should come on. Okay. Um, another one is if your garbage disposal, if you hit the turn and switch on and it hums and then it stops, then that means it's stuck. There's something in there. Um, there's, you know, there's several different ways you can do that. Whether you turn the switch off, look down in it with a flashlight, don't stick your hand in it. Okay. Maybe you can see something down in there. And if it is, if you're secure enough with that switch on the wall being your safety net, then clean it out of there. Clean it out of there with a pair of pliers. Um, pair of needle nose you can reach down in there and pull stuff out with. Uh, but there also is a, um, a Allen screw on the bottom of it. If it does get stuck, then you can actually, they make an Allen wrench to go in that, that you can actually turn it by hand and grind that stuff out of there if it's something small. So after you get it up and going um, and you're, it's working again and it starts normally, you don't have to buy a new garbage disposal. No, no. I mean, they usually run around around $100. Uh, they, you know, they're, they're fairly inexpensive, but garbage disposals chew up garbage. So if they're dirty, they're kind of meant to be. Um, you know, you just want to rinse it out, have water running in it while you're using it and stuff like that. So it helps the food rinse out and go down the drain. Wow. So if you do need or if you don't get it working, could it be like the electrical that you've tripped a breaker or something? Sure, sure. You could, I mean, it could be hooked to a breaker in the, which it should be hooked to a breaker in the breaker box. Um, you know, the little switch on the bottom of it may not have been enough. It may have flipped a breaker in your breaker box. So, yeah. That's why so, I wanted to mention it. So, so make sure and check your breakers. If it doesn't work, could have thrown a breaker, um, could have flipped a little reset switch on the bottom of it. So, but always check your breakers and stuff like that before you start replacing um, garbage disposal or any electronic device because it could just be a breaker that flipped off. So it could be just something as simple as that. Uh, you need to reset your breaker or you need to clean it out. Now, when I did that spaghetti, though, I'm thinking I had to take the bottom off or something to clean it off. No, ma'am. No, I didn't. Okay. No, we... we you, you, the garbage disposal is kind of a self-contained unit. Um, it should never be taken apart unless you're just... Well, and I'm not handy enough to do it. Unless you're just wanting to take the whole thing apart. Now, you can disconnect it from your sink, take it out from underneath there, and clean it out that way. That's a little bit more of a process. I don't think I did that. No, I'm pretty sure you didn't. Uh, but um, but there's, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty self-contained unit. Either it works or it doesn't. And then if it doesn't, you have to figure out what it's doing. Um, you know, and that kind of usually points you in the direction of why, why and how you need to fix it. So. And I remember like when I turned it on, it was like, hmm, like it sounded like it wanted to mm -hmm. go, but it didn't, it wasn't like a pleasant hum that it was singing songs to me. It yeah. was like an angry hum, like, yeah. hmm. Well, what that is, is it's got an electric motor in the bottom of it. So as soon as you hit that and the electric motor can't spin, that's actually electricity in there humming, trying to get the motor to spin. Awesome. Are there any other tips? Um, you can clean your dish or your garbage disposal. How do you clean your garbage disposal, Christy? Uh, you take ice and lemons. Ice and lemons. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. But not lemon rinds. Oh. They Is it just the lemon juice? Just the lemon juice. Oh. You know, clean it out. Or if you want to take the rind off the lemon, you can throw the rest of the lemon in there. Um, but just not the rinds. They tear stuff up. So. Wow. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Teaching us all about garbage disposal problems and how to fix it and do it yourself. So you don't have to call professionals every single time. You can actually fix it yourself and save you some time and money. And we want to help you do that. And we want to help you put your family food first and feed them. Make sure your garbage disposal is working. Yeah, because if you, your garbage disposal doesn't work, then you can't throw away the old food and replace it with new food. And you can't use your sink. When you're cooking, ladies, we need to use the sink, don't we? Mm -hmm. Usually. Yeah. 
you got to clean stuff and cut stuff up and yep. Yeah, wash your hands, and it's so important to have that sink and garbage disposal working great. You guys, thank you for joining us for your garbage disposal problems and doing it yourself. What kind of garbage disposal do you purchase? A Badger 100 would be perfect. They run anywhere from $100 up to $199. Or is replacing the garbage disposal. Um, sink aerator, there's 47 different names for it. So, but I call it the garbage disposal. We're going to take this one out because it just quit working and it's leaking. And then we are going to put a new one in. So that's what I'm going to show you is how to do that. We have a new garbage disposal right here. Okay. This is, you can pick these up from Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, it is the Badger in-sync aerator. This is a third horsepower. Okay. So this is not really the biggest one, not really the smallest one. It's just kind of the mediocre one. They work great. Um, we like Badger. We replace those a lot. Okay. So it's just, you know, a few things that you're going to need. So you need new garbage disposal. It will come with a kit of pieces. Sometimes you will need these. You'll definitely need the new gasket for it. Sometimes you won't, depending on the way that it's hooked up. Okay. Some of them have a straight line. This one comes with a 90, but some of them, you know, you just, you just have to look at it before you start replacing it. Some of the tools you will need. Um, Crescent wrench is always a good one to have around just in case. A couple of different screwdrivers, okay? Flathead, Phillips head, and then this also comes in the kit, okay? So this is not just a weird wrench that they throw in there for anything. Um, actually, on the bottom of your garbage disposal, if it ever gets stuck with something in it, see the little wrench spot right here? Stick this wrench in there, and you can actually spin it without putting your hands in your garbage disposal, and you can get it unclogged that way. Very simple, so you always want to keep this wrench. I usually leave ours underneath the sink at our house, um, but it's a good, just a good place to leave it. That's why you always know it's right there because that's the only thing you'll ever use it on, okay? Another thing on the bottom of the new gar garbage disposal, this is the reset switch. So if your garbage disposal won't ever come on and it doesn't whine or anything when you turn the light switch on, uh, then it may be this switch. So you turn your light switch back off for your garbage disposal, push this, and if it clicks, then it was clicked off for some reason, whether it may be something that stuck into it or some anything like that. And then um, once you press this, then you can flip your switch on, make sure that there's nothing stuck in it. Flip your switch on, it should run just fine. If there is something stuck into it, it will just make a buzzing sound. It won't turn, so turn it back off and you may have to take your garbage disposal out and investigate and see what is stuck inside of it. The little rubber thing is the gasket on top. It does come off. If you have your garbage disposal out, you just peel it off and you can actually see inside of the garbage disposal what, how it works, what's inside of it, anything like that, okay? So we're gonna snap this back on there. And then we are going to start looking at removing the old garbage disposal. It looks like Max has a helper, Groot Rocket. Hey guys, it's me again. Um, we're going to take off the old garbage disposal. As you can see that it's been in here for a while. Um, it does have a straight shaft, not a curved shaft on it. So that's what I was talking about a while ago. You always want to look before you start taking apart stuff or going to buy new things. This actually has, you know, like I said, a straight shaft that comes out of it, uh, not the 90 that turns down. So you will reuse this piece right here for your new garbage disposal. So what you can do is up underneath here, and I will show you on this new one. So this goes up and it spins onto some threads and turns like that. And that's what holds your garbage disposal up on there. Okay. So to get this off, you actually have to turn it this way. And then your garbage disposal will not fall if you're, it will fall if you're hanging, if you're not hanging onto it. Um, so you have to hang on to it when you're taking that loose. So you want to go ahead and remove this line which I'm going to go ahead and do now. Okay, this is the drain line for your garbage disposal. So that's the reason you see all the towels underneath here. There may be still be some water in this, but we don't want to make a mess without having towels. So we're going to move some tools, kind of get everything ready to go so we can take this loose. And it is just a fitting that, that from this pipe to this one. Okay, and then up here you will see a uh, dishwasher drain. Okay, so I took this loose a while ago. So you just twist it and it comes off of there too. Make sure that there's no water in it. You might even have a pan or a bucket underneath here to make sure that there's no water in it, okay? If there's no water, you can take it loose, lay it down there like that, and it's fine. 
So you would either reach up here with a screwdriver, stick it in one of the grooves on there, twist it one way or the other, and then the dishwasher or the garbage disposal will come off of here. Okay, so you can lower it down to the ground like that. I always like to leave it all connected before I lower it to the ground. It's much easier to take it apart, okay? So you can see on the front here, this little straight thing that we were talking about, the straight pipe that comes off of it, is a uh, flat head screwdriver. So you would just start taking these loose, okay, on each side. Now there is a gasket. This is where the water comes out and the uh, ground up food or whatever you put down your garbage disposal will come out of this hole and into the drain. So there probably is some water or something behind this. So save these screws that you're taking out of here because you can reuse them. You don't have to use the new ones or you can use the new ones on it. Okay, so you will take this apart. It's like that. Okay, save your screws, and then that's the part that you want to save. So this connects to your garbage disposal, in-sink aerator, whatever you want to call it, just like that. So you will save this piece. All right, set it over here to the side, and then you will flip this over. Now this is the part where if there's any water in here, where it will come out, all right? So you want to flip it over onto a towel if you can, just like that. Okay, now you can see where the wiring goes into the bottom of it. This is my dog Groot. He loves to help. Okay, so there's a little plate cover on the back of this right here. So it is a Phillips head screwdriver. You can take the plate off. Loosen it up, take the screw out, and then this little plate comes off the back of it. So you can see the wiring and stuff here. Now, we did turn the switch off. We did not turn the breaker off because if we turned the breaker off in the house, we would obviously be in the dark. You wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So for this purposes, we did not turn the breaker off. If you were doing this at home, find the breaker that runs your garbage disposal and flip the breaker off, not just the switch for safety reason. Okay, so you wanna get these wire nets up out of here like that. Okay, and you'll just take these wire nets off. Pull the wires loose. Can you show them what a wire nut is? This is a wire nut, okay? So a wire nut is something where you connect two wires together and you actually twist this down on here. It has a spring, it's threaded spring inside of it. So when you put two wires together, you start twisting that down on there and it keeps them nice and tight together. So that the more you twist it, the tighter it gets. It's just like screwing a nut on a bolt. Y'all seen me when we took this down we waited until it was done out of there to take this piece off of here. And I'm gonna wipe this off on a towel here real quick. Kind of clean it up. Okay, so we can see what's going on. But to put this back in here, we're gonna actually install this first into the pipe like that and slide it all the way in there so it's out of the way. Now, whenever we get ready to connect that to this, we can slide it out to, to meet it, okay? So you'll flip this back over. Just like that. Hold your hand underneath of it. Now this is the tricky part. So you gotta hold your hand underneath of it, push up on it, and then twist this part at the same time. All right, so we're gonna try to put this up here. This is usually the tricky part of the whole thing if you're not laying down underneath your sink. Okay, stick your head underneath there, push up on it like that and you will try to get this started at the same time. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It may take a time or two to get everything started at the same time. It may be easier to go under here and lay down and push up on it and twist at the same time. But that's what it will end up looking like once it's back up there. I'm going to lay down and push up on this to make sure it's up on there right. So if you guys excuse for me for half a second, I'll be right back happens whenever you're doing this at home you have a dog that just won't leave you alone and you're always trying to help so he just kind of wears you out a little bit sometimes you got to give him a little love and then be like get away from the group okay folks so we laid down underneath there pushed that up and got it started on the three different points that are on here 
okay? So an easy way to turn this and tighten it down is just with the screwdriver, okay? They make the little eyelets on here, up underneath here, so you can actually stick the screwdriver in, like that, and then you can turn it just like that. Now don't worry if the whole thing spins, you wanna get it as tight as possible, so where it stops, boom. So see, it just stopped right there. So now, you can take your hands on the bottom of the garbage disposal and spin it back to where you want it at. Okay? It's got a little rubber gasket up here, remember we looked at earlier, that has a little bit of oil on it to keep it sealed, and you can spin it back to where you want it to go. All right? So now, the old garbage disposal right here where this connected had a little rubber washer in it, which we're going to change. This comes with your new garbage disposal. Okay? Send this to spits right here like that just nice and flat and then when you connect your new to it this part actually seals up against this okay and you put your screws back in it and then it's all connected again okay so you'll slide this over and see how it points down a little bit it's off just grab this and bow it up just a little bit don't put this nut on here yet you can slide it back against it so it's kind of out of the way so you want those holes in that flange to line up with your garbage disposal. So you may have to move it a little bit back and forth to get it to where you want it to be. So that's pretty even right there. It's lined up pretty good. So even if you have to slide this back and do something like that where it's all lined up and looks good, then that's the way you got it. It's got to be nice and flat right here. Okay. So you would start and you kind of got to do this with two hands or you can start this. Let's start it on the back back here. Go ahead and put a screw in this. Now you can spin this collar that goes on here. And go ahead and put a screw in that side of it. This is gonna help you get it lined up, okay? Don't put it in there very far, enough where it's still real loose. Okay, go ahead and grab your other screw. And then when you put this side on, you can just push up on the flange of it and put the bolt in. Okay, see I pushed up on this flange. It already had this bolt in. So it acted as kind of a lever, all right? So what you'll want to do now is go ahead and tighten down the other side as tight as you can get. Because the other side is harder to reach than this side is, all right? Let's go ahead and take your screwdriver, line it up over here, and tighten it down, okay? And then you'll come back over here to this side and tighten it down and you will virtually have no gap in this whenever you tighten it down all the way. So right there, it started to get kind of hard and you will tighten it down all of the way, just like that, okay? Now don't forget to hook your dishwasher hook, drain hose back up. Just slide this above everything else, let it hang out right there for a minute. Come back over here and grab it and then slide it back on the top part of it right there. Slide it all the way on there. Okay, and then you will tighten that back down with a screwdriver. Okay guys, we got all this hooked back up and then we are going to hook up the dishwasher drain back to the garbage disposal again. Now, this is one thing that you need to check before you hook this back up. Most dishwashers come with a little plug right here. Okay, so this little plug, if you can stick your finger in there and it doesn't go all the way in, then that plug is still in there. So you need to knock that out for your garbage for, for your dishwasher to work correctly. If you don't knock that out, then your dishwasher is not gonna drain and you're gonna be calling back whoever put this in for you and be like, hey, my dishwasher doesn't drain, there's something wrong. 99% of the time, it's gonna be this little plug that's right here because you can use these with or without a dishwasher, okay? Or your dishwasher may have the drain down here. So until you find out what's going on, where your dishwasher hooks up at, don't knock this out, okay? So now you can just take a screwdriver and a hammer and knock that little plug out. And you may have to reach down inside of here with a pair of pliers or something once you're done and reach and grab that little plastic piece that's in there and pull it out, okay? And that's how you just, you install a garbage disposal. Make sure all your connections are tight before you start running water through it or anything. But when you do run water through it, you always wanna make sure, leave your towel down here, put your pan down here. That's the way you can tell if anybody's anything's leaking or not. But you'll want to, when you got water running, go through it and run your finger across the bottom of everywhere that you connected stuff at and make sure there's no water dripping. And that is it.